Hope these examples are helpful. So, what about if we had this, that? As you guys can tell, nitrogen is probably one of my favorite atoms. So, let's see how this works. Okay? Let's see how this one works, okay? The best thing to do for you guys is stop the video. Try to figure this out on your own, okay? So, let's count how many pi electrons. Oh, excuse me. First thing is first, okay? I went against my own rule. See if everything's sp2 hybridized in this molecule. sp2, right? sp2, 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 sp2. Right? So now we move away from this category over here. So forget about this non-aromatic category. Let's move on to this category here. Every atom in the ring has to be sp2 hybridized and we have determined that. Now we move on to this final part is where we have to set this formula equal to the total amount of pi electrons we calculated from here. And again, we set this one equal to the total amount of pi electrons we count. Now, in this case, we have to count it. And so far, some people may say, well, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's 10 pi electrons. Some people may say, well, there's 6 pi electrons. Okay. So those people that said there's 6 pi electrons, they understood the concept that I was explaining in the previous, in the previous example. Now, why is there 6 pi electrons? Because, again, this is incorrect. Okay. It's 6 pi electrons. So why is that? Well, this one, again, when we're setting this and this equal to, we're setting it equal to the total amount of electrons in p orbitals, okay? So pi electrons. So again, we count that. That's two. We count this one. That's another two, so that's four. Now some of you guys may count this, this, and that, and that's how you guys concluded ten. Well, again, it goes back to hybridization. This nitrogen, again, same example I used in the last example, this nitrogen has one empty p orbital. This guy right here, this nitrogen has one p orbital, an empty one, after the hybridization. This one also has one p orbital. Okay? So this guy has one p orbital, this guy has one p orbital. Okay? So, in order for them to make this double bond right here, this guy, again, is two p orbitals overlapping to form a double bond. So, in order for, for them to make this double bond here, there was an overlap. Oh, that's ugly. Okay? There's an overlap of p orbitals. Okay? So, that's, that's incorrect. I should have drawn it better. Okay? This double bond. Okay, there's an overlap of p orbitals. So again, these lone pairs. So that means that if these are the p orbitals, so again, so this nitrogen uses up its p orbital to right here. This nitrogen right here uses uses up this p orbital right here. So there's no more p orbitals, right? So that means that this lone pair right here is in an sp2 hybridized orbital. This lone pair right here is also in an sp2 hybridized orbital. So therefore, again, you cannot count sp2 electrons in the total count, okay? It has to be pi electrons. So that's a, pi, a pair of pi electrons, pi electrons, and here's the pi electrons. So it's 2, 4, 6. It says 6 equal to 4n plus 2 pi, and 4n... Um, is equal to 6 and then again from the examples we know that it's equal this is this expression works we could plug in 1 which is a whole number and so therefore this whole thing is considered aromatic okay again you know a lot of people get lost with these concepts and it's about thinking about this systematically understanding the concepts behind it this nitrogen has three sp2 hybridized orbitals this nitrogen has three sp2 hybridized orbitals therefore meaning that each one of these nitrogens have one empty p orbital those p orbitals are used up to form the pi bond right here 
So if those P orbitals are used up, it means that these lone pairs are in a sp2 orbital. Therefore, meaning that it is only this pair of electrons that we count and the total pi electron count. Because again, we count pi electrons, not sp2 electrons, okay? So therefore, this, this molecule here is aromatic, okay? I'm going to try to end this video pretty soon. Um, let's go over two more examples, I think. Uh, even though I said uh, two examples previously, I really want to get this down, okay? So, this one doesn't really throw you guys off, okay? So let's just say, okay. Okay, there you go. That's the next molecule that your professor presents to you. He asks you to um, determine if it's aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. Well, in this case, let's do the same thing. Identify, identify the hybridization of each atom on the molecule. Sp2, 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 sp2. Oh, sp3, 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 right? Because there's two H's here. It's connected to four groups. This central atom is connected to four groups. H, H, carbon, carbon, sp3. And sp2, sp3 hybridization automatically falls under this category, right? So you guys are like saying, oh, that was easy. That's non-aromatic. Well, here's where the trick is. The rule is, if you can find on a large molecule, okay, let's just let's make this even more crazy looking right excuse me if you can find any piece on a large molecule that's aromatic then the overall molecule is considered aromatic okay we'll think of the rest of these groups as substituents on this on the aromatic piece okay so even though excuse me even though this is sp3 hybridized we have found a piece in the molecule that's aromatic okay and therefore making the overall molecule aromatic okay so two four six um right uh four n plus two is the one that always equals six so this overall molecule is aromatic okay not non-aromatic okay so let's go through one more time if you could find any piece on it large molecule okay so this piece is the one we looked at we we managed to see that it's aromatic if we found a little piece on the mole overall molecule that's aromatic that makes the whole thing aromatic even if there are sp3 hybridized carbons okay so go over another one of these types of examples okay